Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a beautiful day in the Lord. I have a couple of devotions for you today. And this one is 1 Corinthians 3, 8, and it says, He who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. How to succeed in business without really trying um, <clears throat> opened up on Broadway in 1961 and went on to win a Pulitzer Prize for drama in 1962 and seven Tony Awards. After its 1,417 performances, the musical was later made into a movie of the same name and reprised on Broadway in 1995 and then again in 2011. It told the story of seemingly miraculous rise of a young a window washer to the vice presidency of the Worldwide Wicket Company. Such transformations in the business of life are mostly the stuff of fiction. For most people, success is achieved slowly and steadily, the result of hard work, diligence, and the focus on the long view. Not surprisingly, the same is true in the spiritual life. It's no coincidence that the term labor appears 19 times from Acts through Revelation, almost always referring to the labor involved in making spiritual progress. If you are averse to hard work generally, you'll probably resist laboring to see Christ formed in you. You can read that in Galatians 4.19. God has promised rewards for those in Christ who labor faithfully for him and for his kingdom. The work is now, the wages are yet to come. And uh, Thomas Watson has said, faith believes as if it did not work and it works as if it did not believe hallelujah yeah we we have to um we have to grow in the faith and we i said uh, you know becoming a seasoned christian is is laborious you know it's a, it's a work in progress each day you know with the holy spirit you work towards your perfection and um, this one is called Love Sick. And it's uh, from Song of Solomon 5.8. And it says, I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him I am lovesick. Recently, a lonely reader wrote to the advice columnist of an online magazine, I love someone who doesn't feel the same way. Everyone tells me to move on, but it's just not working. What do I do? Do you remember when your heart filled with joy because of a phone call from one, the one you loved, or a note, or a hug, or even a wave of the hand from someone that you cared about? Conversely, have you ever known the pain of loving someone but not being loved in return? The woman in Song of Solomon could identify with that as she struggled with her feelings for Solomon. We can't control how another person views us, nor can we command love from another person. But the Lord's love for us will never falter. We're secure in him. Furthermore, he promises to meet all of our needs in life as we seek him first. And you can read that in Matthew 6, 33. If you feel lonely, rest in his love. Be proactive in meeting the needs of other people and trust him to meet the deepest needs of your own heart in his own time and in his own way. And uh, Frank Hoyce, uh, Frank Hoyce uh, Fenland says, Lord, I know not what I ought to ask of thee. Thou only knowest what I need. Thou lovest me better than I know how to love myself. Oh, all glory to God. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. And thank you, Holy Spirit.
very very profound and they they have a message you know and you know if this is speaking to you all glory to God you know uh, that's why we come out and read these devotions because there's always someone out there that needs to hear it okay that's all I have for you today I always want to remind you that I love you and Jesus loves you and to never forget how much Jesus loves you okay talk to you real soon shalom <music>